The man Jordan to my right is back, and that is a very popular fact in itself. Uh, it's Jim Wine at Sam and Jordan. We're live in Talk Sport. Martin O'Neill alongside us. Martin, we love having you on on a Monday, mate. We enjoy it immensely. Martin, talking about the situation at the Republic of Ireland. What is the situation at Manchester United? We now know this morning that Ineos will explore how to expand a rebuild Old Trafford into a 90,000-seat stadium if... So Jim Ratcliffe is successful with his offer to buy a stake in Manchester United. This is where we're at, it would appear. So what does a Glazer Ratcliffe ownership actually look like and what will it mean in practical terms? Uh, Dominic O'Connell, of course, um, a regular on Times Radio and who joined us recently, a man who's right across this, uh, joins us live this morning. Dominic, good morning to you. I'll put that very question to you. Dominic, what does a Glazer Ratcliffe ownership actually look like? Uh, hello, Jim. Well, that's a very good question, actually. The, uh, uh, rather like when we spoke last time, there are two big outstanding questions for me in this, if there is a deal to be announced uh, this week. The first is the governance arrangements in the short term. Uh, it's, been, you know, it's been pretty widely reported that Jim Ratcliffe would appoint a sporting director, take charge of the, of the sporting bit of the club, the, the affairs on the field. Well, how does that work if the Glazers still have voting control of the company? It seems to me that you know, there has to be some very interesting sort of uh, governance requirements put in place to, to make sure that actually happens. The second thing we don't know is the arrangements that will govern the future ownership of the club. If he takes a 25% stake, well, how then does he progress to owning the whole club? In, in previous situations, normal corporate situations, you might do it by agreeing some future threshold valuation for the clubs. I don't know, say £8 billion. If in five years' time an external valuation says Manu is worth that, then he gets the right to buy the remaining Glazer shares. There are other ways you could do it, but, but that's a way that occurs to me. So, I see. so, a, series Sam, of put, you're so, so a series of put and calls, Dominic, is that what you're suggesting? Exactly. You give, you give the Glazers the options to get out of the price they want and a pre-agreed price, uh, but you also give them the option to leave uh, uh, if, they, if it doesn't quite make that, but they still want to go. Sam, I, I'm just going to say to Dominic before we go any further, you know Sir Jim, you have a dealings with them. What do you think his motivations are in this situation? Because uh, the upshot to me, Simon, it, it seems to me someone as ambitious and such a brilliant businessman as Sir Jim has got his own massive ideas for Manchester United. And yet, with the Glazers still in situ, he's not going to be able to explore them. Well, I, I think he, he obviously knows the Glazers very well. And perhaps one of the secrets to him, him actually sealing the deal in the, in the end is his ability to manage that personal relationship with the Glazers. Um, it's also worth, I should just update you on what's happened to the Manchester United share price this morning. Uh, one class of shares is quoted on the New York Stock Exchange and in pre-market trading, in New York that they do do a pre-market trading which is pretty a pretty thin book, it's electronic offers only, uh, but the share price has fallen by about 20% this morning. And I think you can interpret that as being people who had bought into the shares, perhaps hedge funds, expecting a big money Qatari offer for all the shares, then being disappointed by the news over the weekend and selling out. So, so the latest is that the share price has fallen quite a bit. Does that surprise you, Simon? There'll be a lot um, of glum faces as a yeah, result I mean, of I that. Thought, I, thought that'd be, I thought that situation had been flush, flush through when the share price dropped. Um, several weeks ago when we spoke last time, Dominic, when we saw a 23% drop in the share price from $23 down to 19 or 21%. When you look at the structure, I mean, a lot of the football media, it's very interesting to have you speak about it from the business media because a lot of the football media are writing this up in a certain way and almost dressing it up as a philanthropic exercise. When you look at the situation surrounding uh, Jim Radcliffe and the opportunity with Manchester United. What do you think is his blueprint and his modus operandi and his motivation? Well, well I think as, as I spoke to you last time, I have spoken to him about this. And he, he although he is a big Man U fan and he sees it as a labour of love, he also doesn't do things to lose money. You know, he sees this as a good 10-year, 20-year investment although he is uh, over 70, so perhaps a 10-year investment rather than a 20-year investment. <laughs> um, the, other, the other thing that is really interesting to me about the reporting this morning is reporting on investment in the, in the, you know, to take the stand up to a 90,000-seat capacity. Yeah. If you think about it, the money that, that he will give for a, for a stake in the club, the club is not selling anything. No, the Glazers so are getting the money. The, the Glazers will get the money, and if he, if he makes a tender to some of, the, some of the other shareholders, they will get the money. So where is this money coming That's from? That's what I was going to ask you next. Well, well this, this makes me think that 
perhaps, I mean, this is me putting two and two together and coming up with seven and a half, is that is that it's likely maybe that the club will issue new shares. That, really? That he, won't, he won't be buying off the Glazers, but he could buy new shares, dilute the Glazers, dilute the other shareholders as well, but then the club would have new money to spend on a new stand. What do you what do you think, Dominic? Mm. About uh, I mean, as a cheerleader, <clears throat> the supporters listen to the likes of Gary Neville a lot. Now, Gary Neville last night tweeted to Twitter. It was more of a novel than a tweet. Um, at the end of it all, he says, "I think there are a whole bunch of questions. I'm sure the fans would like asking. Asking there will be lots more, but here's a starter for 16." And he comes off. He reels off 16 questions that he thinks he wants to hear the answers to, which in turn would benefit. The supporters, and one of those would be which glazers are going, or is it a family dilution? Does that matter in it in, in any way, Dominic? I mean, he he asks, does it impact uh, the the New York Stock Exchange shareholders? You've just explained that. Mm-hmm. Does the executive stay the same? Do any of these questions matter, Adam? Uh, no, not really. I don't think. Um, I mean, what what the. He can. It's absolutely fine for Manchester United fans to feel that they that that it's their club and they own it. But the truth is, it is the Glazers' property. I mean, this is a pretty unpalatable truth for people. But it's up to them to do what they want with it. There are lots of you know. If someone owns something, then then it's theirs to use, even if it's a company and even if it has millions of fans worldwide. Uh, if the fan if the fans really want to control the club, they should buy it. Right. Ratcliffe will know on Thursday. I think. Is this the end game we're at now, uh, as far as it goes for the, for now? Do you think this is the end game, Dominic? That Ratcliffe and Ineos will own twenty five percent, and the Glazers remain in situ. Well, I think everything depends upon what's announced around the sale of that twenty five percent stake, whether it's Glazer shares uh, and perhaps a tender offer for the quoted shares that's being done, whether it's new shares being issued, and crucially, the governance arrangements around what happens in the short term. Uh, around the control of the club, but much more importantly for me, what happens to the future ownership of the club and whether there's any side deal that governs the sale of the remaining remaining Glazer shares. Dominic O'Connell, thank you very much indeed. Dominic, uh, a regular on Times Radio uh, and, of course, joining us on a semi-regular basis here at TalkSport. Sammy, you nod in agreement virtually with everything Dominic says. Well, you can't not do. (coughs) I mean, mean, the, the, the points that Gary is making are just for the gallery. They have no substance behind a lot of what's being said in terms of who the shareholders are. Does it dilute the... Who cares what, who, if it dilutes the shareholders of the New York Stock Exchange? Ultimately, you need to look at what this is going to mean to the football club rather than ultimately the peripheral noise about who's got what, when and how. The Glazers, like Dominic said, and I know it's an unpalatable statement and I say it regularly and Man United fans don't like it, you may own it emotively, but these guys own it really so you can huff and you can puff, but you ain't blowing their house down anytime soon. And the only thing that's going to do that is the economic transaction that details that they get what they want. It's interesting. I would imagine that, that Joel and Avram are the ones that have retained their shareholding because they're the ones that think the $10 billion valuation that's further down the line after a 2026 World Cup in America is achievable. They're more motivated by staying in the business than the other siblings that are probably the ones that have been taken out. There's a, The governance issue is a very key component because of the way the voting rights are structured. But the bottom line is, is if, they're buying, if, if they're buying Glazer's shares, not issuing new shares, the Glazers are pocketing the money. There's no money going into the football club. So where is the development of this new stadium coming from? Where is this ridiculous wish list that Gary is playing to his gallery for to make sure that he's popular with the Manchester United fan base? Mm. Where is that money coming from? I would imagine an element of debt. Does Sir Jim stop at 25%? I can't speak for what the man wants to do with that football club. Does he stop at 25% of his own money? That's a different question. Mm. That'll be a different conversation further down the line mm. when you start to look at a football club that has a valuation of ten billion rather than five or six, and people have got certain shareholdings and they can use that to gear the club again. Be interesting. Look, he is not for me. I think he's a, a remarkable businessman. But this idea for Manchester United fans that someone is going to come in and subsequently put a billion and a half of his own cash in for a, a a small equity, or 25% is a decent equity stake, but it's not a controlling equity stake, yeah. and then suddenly be there to give you everything you want mm. is a silly conversation. Okay. People need to grow up a little bit about it. Well, Sir Jim uh, and everybody else is going to find out in the course of this week as to whether or not his bid is successful with his offer to buy a stake in Manchester United. We're across it. Jim White and Simon Jordan. 
Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.